this is our, our fifth artist talk together, which is pretty exciting. Um, and I said to somebody um, and wrote somewhere that I felt like this show was the most direct expression of the inside of David Lloyd's brain that we had ever done together. Um, and uh, since I love his brain, it was a pretty exciting one to get to put up. But I do feel like um, I really want us to sort of jump in where we are now to start and definitely encourage all of you who love questions, love having it be very dialogue. So feel free to jump in at any point. Um, if you have a question, but can you start us off letting us know how yes. this all came about? Like she said, if anybody had any questions, it's a discussion, it's not like a lecture here. Um, I started out because I started, I got the app, what's what's the app? It was a meditation app, and I started meditating. And it's Headspace. one of the, Headspace. what's it called? Headspace. Headspace. I got Headspace, I started meditating, and I just somehow thought about, well, after meditating, you know, for a few months like that, I thought about what would happen if I just put myself in a kind of meditative state and made a drawing in that state. And I made one, and then I thought, what if I did this every day for a year? And so I started doing it. So I decided to make a drawing a year just to see what it would be like to sort of open up my brain to... Uh, just a creative process without any limitations on what's it about, what does it mean, is it good, is it bad, is it this, is it that, and I got about a month into it and I remember saying to my wife, I can't do this, This is I, it's too hard because I started bringing all the baggage in instead of just being there and I talked to a friend of mine, he said, don't think of it that way, he said, just think of it like if you're, if you get, uh, if you get, if it's too much, scribble something on a napkin and that'll be your drawing of the day. And I thought, yeah, of course. Why am I being, turning this into something? And once I knew that, then I could just be free. And I actually started drawing with a lot of intensity. And they weren't scribbles. They were actually, each one was a pretty, you, you know, it was a pretty um, involved thing. So I um, started doing them. And they kind of, if they, it's chronological. It starts down there and it kind of goes around and ends up at the, rainbow one down at the end where it's the drawings fading and the sunset sort of its end of the line. But it has a kind of ebb and flow, but what was, it was so interesting to do it because I was saying to somebody just a little while ago that it was like working out. Nobody wants to work out unless you're somebody who works out every day and then you want to work out. And it became something that I look forward to, this state I could get myself into to make these drawings. but. Once I got myself to that point where I could just do, and I did them like every day at around the same time in the afternoon, and I didn't give myself any limitations on materials. I just wanted to make them on paper. They're watercolor, they're acrylic, they're charcoal, they're colored pencils. Everything just started pouring out of my brain, and I felt found it super easy weirdly easy after a certain amount of time. And everybody has said, God, how did you do this? And I don't know if I could do it again. Like if I started tomorrow, I think I would be right back stuck. But there was a period of a year where I was just able to, it's almost like, I think for myself as an artist, I'm a little ADD and I'm a little bit of a, my brain is sort of always working and I needed a way to to sort of channel that and let it out. So I use this kind of space of a, at about four in the afternoon most days just to draw. And um, I was, I look around and I think, holy crap, you know, where did all this come from, you know? Um, but there's other aspects to it that are also interesting to me about the, just the nature of creativity. Um, like what, where does it come from and what, is, what do things mean? Like these, I guess you could, I don't know how to quite put it, but I've been grappling with the idea of meaning in art for a while. And um, I've been thinking a lot about, we live in a time where art is sort of um, supposed to be about things, like current things, and that's not the way my brain works. 
I'm much more interested in a kind of um, the space between things. Like this world we live in is this big, so we make things about politics and all this stuff, and it's this big. But I'm kind of worried of the world thinking about this big, like the whole thing, just like on a cosmic level, what happens in your brain when you open it up and stuff comes out. So that's sort of what I've been thinking a lot about. But anybody have a question? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, how you were doing this, but mm -hmm. were you also doing your normal work? Yes. Well, so mm -hmm. this was just a practice, and then did any of these inspire a painting that came out? Of Absolutely. In, in fact, they've inspired what I'm doing right now, and it just cracked open my brain a little bit creatively. And I would, I would encourage anybody who's an artist to take a period of time and try to make something every day. Just do it. If, if, I mean, I think if you were, so I read about, you were saying somebody was a songwriter? Was that you? Somebody said they wrote a song every day. Could be a crummy little song, you know, who knows? Like a, a haiku, right, or a, a poem, anything. You know, put it out there every day, and then what it does is it starts opening up your, your sort of creative muscles. And I think my drawing muscles, like this big right now, it's this big thing there, you know. It's, um, uh, but it also did some weird things, because I play guitar, and after a, a year of doing this, I picked up the guitar and I played better without practicing. Now go figure, and it is real. It is a real thing. My guitar playing is better from making these drawings, and I think there's some sort of neural synapses that were, that did something to, because it was clear that I was like, holy Toledo, this is like different mm -hmm. for me. And it came right after doing these. Mm -hmm. So again, that, that's, that alone says something about you know. Um, so David, what's your, what's your practice that you went into meditation for five minutes, whatever, and then No, at first it was gonna feel sort of like that, and then it just came into, I'm gonna put up something and draw, and not think too hard, and it's funny because there's this idea that if you're not thinking, it's not intellectual, but it is intellectual. It's like the analogy, it's like I've drawn and painted so long that I feel like I have the chops to do whatever I want. Now, I can't do whatever I want, clearly. Nobody can do whatever, you know, there's realist painting that I probably couldn't pull off. But the truth is, is I have a lot of chops over these years. And so I feel like it's like a little like jazz, you know, if you play forever, you can just do it. And so once I gave myself all this permission within a parameter of a drawing, I just let it go. And uh, I think it's, um, I think like she's, like uh, Deborah said, it's like the map of one's brain. You know, you can sort of map the inside. And if everybody in here did that, everybody's would look different. Mm -hmm. You know, mine is a combination of stuff that I've done. Um, I have a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Did you meditate before you start playing the guitar again? No. It just came out. Just came from this. I mean, I could play, okay, I played, but I couldn't play fluidly like I can now. And I could figure out songs fast. If I heard a song, I could figure it out in five seconds. Even Trevor's in my studio, and he's like watching me pick, pick through songs right off the bat off the radio. I don't get it, but there's some connection. It's not just a connection between music and art, it's a connection between using your brain in a way that it kind of works that part of your mind. Part of the brain, yeah. and, and one of the things that's happened, I think, with artists, and I think it's been in art schools, is they're telling artists to come up with an idea and then take that idea, research it, and illustrate it. Hmm. And I don't know if, for me, art doesn't work that way. That's not how I make art. I make art in a completely different way. My studio's a mess. I just make things that come out of me. And then I edit through it and find things that are worth do looking at and put them up. That doesn't mean to say that that's how everybody is, nor should they, but I don't think that's the only way to make art. I have a much more, I think it's art is something that is very difficult to put your finger on and it's hard to teach. I think there's a, 
the sort of, if there's a Venn diagram between those two ways of looking at art making, I think there's probably much more of an overlap than a lot of people think from either perspective in the sense mm -hmm. that if you're talking about, I'm not going to be preconceived with this thing, I'm going to just have it come out of me, but that's still intellectual in the sense that all of the work that you've done in looking and making is built into that sort of unconscious space. Absolutely. Um, I would say that on the other end, when people are starting from a conceptual place, there are a lot of unconscious spaces that come in mm -hmm. um, and act quite a bit in the end results. And it's so, hardly um, how people think, how yeah. their brains and yeah. their brain chemistry is. Yeah. Like there's people who need a concept, but then once they have that, they can, you know, this was a concept. Mm -hmm. You know, it had a beginning and an end. Everything about it was was a thing, but within there, I just let myself run free. Yes. Did you, when they're finished, did you put them away, or did you have the walls up as they were referencing? I had them walled up for a while, but then I just started putting them away, and I didn't see them, and I didn't want to see them, and I thought I don't want to. I it, I didn't try to not repeat myself. I just tried to be in the state I was in that day, and that's why if you will go around, some of them are sort of cartoony, some of them are more kind of serious, some of them are kind of goofy. There's figure developments come in. Um, I don't really make a distinction in painting between figure, fiction, and abstraction. Yes, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered, sorry, it's going to answer now. <laughs> you first, and then you go first. You go, and then I can go. Well, I guess my question is, you told me one time, just paint. Did you find any other sources to help boost your creativity or help it as well? No, but I think I've made art so long that um, once I kind of was able to get in that state, I think it just happened. And I don't think I could have done this at 30 years old. I'm 63 now, and I think I, that all this stuff is just sort of like... I think that you can connect it to somebody playing music. You know, you get to the point where you have the chops just to kind of go off in, on Mars. And I feel like that now. Like I can do what I want to do. Yes, sir. David? So I, I'm a friend of David, so I followed all this, and we would talk, and he was, wow, oh, this is getting really hot. And I, I didn't see it, but I'm curious to the fact that I would see you and I followed, and I was encouraging, I hope. I want to know what was the thing that kind of kept you doubting and, and, and getting, you were kind of, oh, I don't know if I could do this. Was it, was it the discipline or was it the fact that you had to produce every day? Or what oh, well, there's what another was, aspect to it. About what yeah. Was, because the result isn't. There was another it. aspect to it. I put it on Instagram every day. Yeah. So people would actually yeah. say to me, Hey, where's the drawing of the day? You know, like I just I had like a little following. So that was a way of uh, what does it mean? Like like putting it in public. Now I have to do it. So it's sort of I have to. Remember. Not that who who knows who gave it crap or not, but that's what I was doing, and it was. What was happening inside is what I'm talking about. Because I couldn't see it. I'm like, hey, this, these are great. Keep going. You know, and you were not hesitant and not doubtful, but you were just kind of like, oh my god. I don't know. Well, I got about. Six months in, and I thought, "Oh my God, I've done all this. I don't know if I can keep going." But it's like one foot in front of the other, like running a marathon. You know, so just it like, do it. Was it more just fatigue? It was. I think it was. Um, I don't think it was creative fatigue. I think it was just the idea that you have to show up, show up every day. Yeah. But that, that, but that's I, a, that I, in I'm itself is. I'm so proud of you to do this because <laughs> I'm marveling. I'm I can make, I don't know, maybe it'd be really hard. I know. Can I make a, a little observation on that too? Mm -hmm. um, because Dave would come in, you know, periodically as he does throughout the year. And it was always interesting how he was feeling about doing this series, depending on the particular time and part of the year and how long it had been. I remember like three months in, you came in all full of like fire and vigor and you were like, this is a thing, like this is a real thing and it's gonna be, you know, a whole series and it's gonna be awesome and we're gonna put it up and this is, you know, and you were so excited and then a couple Pretty months much. later, yeah, you came in and you're like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I can keep doing this. But I also feel like, you know, as an observer with all of the artists that I get to work with, everybody goes through periods in 
you know, a kind of a creative pattern where there are moments where you feel absolutely sort of in the zone and the space and, and everything is, is coming fluidly in front of you. And then there are moments where you feel stuck and like you don't know what you're doing with your life and you don't know what you're doing with absolutely. your visual language. And I think to and have no to artist doesn't go through, through this. Yeah. And to have to have made a commitment yeah. to have to make during those periods when you feel a little bit lost. Um, you know, I think really interesting things come out of that. Yeah, it's, it's just sort of, I know because it's a full 365 days, it's a linear progression in a sense, but it's not. Um, and also, to go back to your comment on searching for meaning in art and what it is, um, it's interesting for me to think about the trials and tribulations of your you know, mental, emotional state and having to complete this whole project. Mm -hmm. Can you? And that is a rhetorical question. But are, is there visual evidence in the compositions, shapes, and forms that would inform or be informed by your states that you had to work through? Absolutely. That you can pick out. Yeah, and they're not super obvious, like, like wow, this day it's all black and brown and and sad and dark and this and that. This day it's all happy colors, this day it's this and that. It's not like that. It, but there are definitely some that have a kind of lightness, and there's some that have a kind of um, busy, sort of uptight quality. So uh, definitely, and I think that the reason I could do it is I let that be that way. I didn't really judge. People have asked me, did you go back into them? Did you press them? No, I did them all in one sitting. One time, put it up. If I hated it and I couldn't make it go any farther, I put it up anyway. Because the whole point was to do one a day and let it evolve. And some of them I fuss over like it was a most important painting I'd ever made. And other ones I just sort of do them and, you know, some of them on notebook paper. Um, but but the, the point was is to do something that was methodical and almost ritualistic. It's like that was, it was like a ritual. Do this every day. For me, that's the meaning. Like if that I is the meaning. Like that, that's right. The meaning yeah. Well, right. And so, uh, when when Deb said on the thing, she said David Lloyd a talk and a walk through. I thought walking through isn't what it's about because they're individually, they're totally. I think each one individually works. In fact, I love looking at them individually. But ultimately, the show is a giant installation, so it's about that ritual of doing this one a day thing. And. Um, well, I think, in fact, when you talk, when you set up that parameter, you set up a really tight parameter, it's mm -hmm. almost liberating. It is liberating. You, you and I have done that, you, do, you did this one a day, and you let it go, right. it, and get it done. And so you just, you're not. So you well, it allowed, you can work on forever and bitch and on about Right, and there is something to that because the, you, the, you have to, uh, within, if you give yourself a, a project like that, you have to give yourself some parameters so you don't just want to. Yeah. And you know, I had a size parameter. I mean, they don't go bigger than 20 or 30 inches. But it's kind of liberating. It's liberating. It is, and uh, you don't have to think. Oh, I'm gonna make them all big, and this all that could be ten feet. No, no, big, they're all yeah. gonna be this within a parameter. Right. Of X exactly. Do um, you have a time uh, parameter? Like, no, I didn't give myself a time. It just had to be every day. Okay. And some came would happen fast, and some happen slow, and depending on the kind of mood I was in. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I never got sick. The whole I haven't been sick since then, but I never even got a cold or a sniffle. Mm -hmm. And I think that I felt somewhere deep inside my body, it's like, dude, you cannot get sick. Yeah. You can't lie in bed. You want to be able to do this. You got to do it. So we went out of the country, and I had to make sure there's Wi-Fi so I could drag my stuff with it, take a picture. I did them in Mexico. I did them in Miami when I was there. Did them everywhere. I just did it. Yes, ma'am. How do you think this overall project affected your greater practice as an artist in the studio? Well, I think it's, it's yeah, the painting, I'm, I'm making a giant painting in my studio, and it definitely has a kind of funny kind of openness about it, I think, mm -hmm. that has a quality of these drawings. So we'll see, you know. I think um, I'm making all these ceramics, mm -hmm. 
Not because they're hip and everybody's doing it. <laughs> we have a kiln at the studio. Back to some earlier work too. Huh? It harkens back to earlier work. It harkens back to earlier work. Um, but it's a it's a process that is such a weird. I would encourage anybody who makes art to do it, even if you're a writer or anything, to try to do something sort of repetitively and and not not look at it like it ha they have to be good. I mean, I think a, a huge percentage of these are pretty good, but some work better than others. I mean, you know, yeah. so. Um, Alex had a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> um, in light, right, think a lot about what the difference is between initiatives and intuition. Did you find that that collapsed in your making of art, or did you separate the two? Or did one intuition and what? Impetus. Um, well, I don't know if intuition, everybody has intuition, but intuition is, is you know, I grew up with a, when I was a kid, my dad was an architect and he made architectural drawings. And I had a kid in like 1958, when I was a really little kid, and my dad gave me a Picasso book. And I still have it. And part of the, I think that there's a way of thinking about space and structure that the little Picasso is. So none of us are really free of our, Conditioning, we're all conditioned with our background, our this, our that, and that's the beauty of it. That's why, that's why it'd be so cool for a lot of people to do this, because you wouldn't get this. You wouldn't get this sort of, you know, kind of quality of like surreal mid-century quality that I grew up with, I was looking at. You would get something completely different. Um, part of the book, though, being Picasso, is it showed these pictures of him running around in his underpants, making art, you know, and he had he had this house that was full of crap and he was making, I thought, even as a kid, I thought, oh my God, that looks so fun. We should be an artist, you know? And it's, he's so ridiculous, you know, he's sort of a cartoon character, but still. I think it's interesting that your dad was an architect and you like to think that he made things completely unplanned, I'm just gonna say. Well, my dad thought I should, yeah, my dad thought I should be an architect. And, yeah. yeah, I was like, no way. Yeah. Um, I had a quick question about yes. time of day. Um, I think many of you probably know that Lloyd is an avid surfer, so morning was probably not going to be the time you chose to do this because you'd be <laughs> out in the water. It would um, get in the way. But was there a specific reason for four o'clock ish? I think it was just when I had sort of come around to a time where I kind of could just. I mean, I didn't adhere to that, like, but it did turn out to be yeah. around four o'clock in the afternoon. I think it was just a weird, it's like the witching hour for me. It's yeah. neither night nor day, and I can just settle down and make something. And uh, so. What you said after uh, your meditation, which is fantastic, I mean, it really blows your mind. And you said you just did it. How do you choose, and you said it's going from your mind, how do you choose it or chose? The different material you use that. Point. Whatever was closest to my arm. So it was just closest because you are right there. Seriously, I have the stuff. All of my studio is full yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I would. Um, Trevor is an artist that has a studio with mine, and he would have a paint left, and I would say, "Can I have some of that red?" And I'd go and I'd start drawing with you know whatever. I didn't want to get into a, a mannered, patterned way of thinking. I wanted to be in a space where I could just make things in the most open way possible within a parameter that was doable. You know, if these were all four by five feet on wood, you know, I couldn't keep them, I didn't know what to do with them. You asked something earlier. You answered that question already. What was that? Uh, first question was, uh, how did it affect you from painting number one to painting oh, right. number yeah, yeah, yeah. five? And, and has it changed something in you? And I you answered some yes, of it music and all? And, and the other question was, uh, you, you, you compared it to working out in, the, in, in training, and sometimes when I work out, some days I don't feel like working out. You know, I just, right. I'll do it tomorrow, my body's tired. Did you feel like that? Like, All the time. So what did you do? You made the I let the drawing dictate that. So I guess if you could say something like an exercise activity, one day you would just take it easy, do a light run or walk or something, another day you feel powerful and you do more. Um, but it is almost a physical activity. It becomes a little bit of an endurance of physicality because there are days when you don't want to make art at all, but you go ahead and make it. And um, 
you end up with all these sort of strange combinations of things. Um, so, but again, ultimately, I think uh, what Jameson said is the meaning might be the ritual of doing it, because I, no one piece is about anything but what was in my mind at the moment, right? And everybody's minds are so complicated, and the human brain is so complicated that anybody can do this, you know? They just have to get to that space where their brain is, is free to do it, you know? Did you ever start some one piece and then go, oh, no, 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 this isn't working? Right. Not really, no. I really no, I was like really. And you kept them, you kept them going. Kept them, kept and did you one ever at a time. And criticize them while you were working with them? Well, I started getting to the point where I thought, this is like a performance piece. You know what I mean? It's like a. It's like a hidden performance, and then this is the result, like a video or something at the end. So. You said you enjoyed looking at them individually as much as you enjoy seeing them as a whole. When you look at individual pieces, can you see them as a roadmap of the year? Like, if they weren't in any order, do you think, say they weren't organized yeah. like this, would you know which part of the year you were at looking at them? Yeah. I, I can. I really? Think yeah, I think summer was, you know, open and more one way and, and uh, uh, you know, winter or dark. It's like stuff like that. But yeah, you can see it as a road map of the brain. Do you ever well. look at them now? Do you ever look at them now and go, uh, I don't think so. Do you ever want to edit them? No, 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 no. <laughs> I no, I don't want to edit them. I, they are what they are. And uh, you like I think people yes. find ones that they can relate to, mm -hmm. and some people can relate directly to some. Yeah. I think it's important that you that you really like them, and you like them. I like them, sure. Yeah, you sure. Really I wouldn't put them out if I didn't like them. I mean, the way yeah, I make no. art, I make a lot of stuff, and I just, um, I make first, edit later, so I don't over edit myself early on. So I make a lot of things that I don't show, that don't, yeah. you know. I think the act of also committing to keep a record of them on Instagram was really interesting. Um, it was interesting from my perspective because we'll go through periods where you don't want me to come to the studio because you're not, because the piece isn't ready yet, mm -hmm. because you're not there most yet the time. enough, most, most of the time. <laughs> that he doesn't want me to come. And so it was really interesting to have this sort of direct connection to seeing what happened with you having to just put things out in the world. Because as much as I think you are very, um, you know, intuitive in your way of making things, um, you're also a perfectionist um, in my mind, yeah. you know, in terms of what you want out of a, a finished piece. So I loved getting to have access to that. Well, I think that right now a lot of artists like to put everything up as they go along, and I like it because I like looking at what other people do. I just don't like doing it myself. I kind of wish I did because I think it's good to share things with the world, but I, when I came out of school, nobody did that. It was like being a writer working on a book. You didn't put paragraphs out for, the, for everybody to sort of critique. You wrote the book and you might show it to your editor or some friends, and then it got published, and then the world saw it. So I have a really hard time sharing. So this, for me, was hard, but once I started doing it, um, it became like an activity between myself and everybody else looking, so it was a lot of fun. And, um, and it felt low pressure, because if you didn't like today, maybe you'll like tomorrow. <laughs> you know? do, you miss, do you miss it? No. <laughs> I thought I would, but I don't. But you know, I've got a lot going on. I've got, I've, I did, uh, I got a bunch of ceramics I'm making and painting. So you know, it's never stops. I'm always making stuff. So I just switched to something else. But I will say, I called David a couple of hours before his opening for this show, and he was like, he was like, yeah, I'm just working on a painting in the studio. I was like, you know, we're gonna open. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that seems. 
let me add an aside to, so I have a studio across from David and I've watched this year process and uh, I hated when he stopped. Because for me, at the beginning it was a curiosity and then I realized that abundance of creativity, sort of unchecked and non-critical, made it way easier for me to create. And so the day that he stopped, I was like, oh, you, he's gonna keep doing this. And the, the molecules in the studio are different now. It really changed the feel of the place. And um, fascinating, I mean, it's this sort of unspoken creative spirit. Yeah, it's like, I think there were people who, there was one lady who said every night before she went to bed, she would look online and see the drawing of the day. They're like, that's so great, you know? It's, it's very cool. But they are, um, they are individual objects and, and if you were to walk around and look at each one, I, I hope that they all have a kind of their own persona and kind of vibe to them. Well, and that was something that you said to me a few times during the process was that you very much didn't want them to be a series so that, you know, when you talked about starting fresh every day, you tried as much as you could to kind of eliminate from your mind what had just happened the day yeah. before so that you were using, you know, as much of a breadth of your language and toolbox as right. you could. Right. I didn't want to do the same guitar solo every session. I wanted to do something. Yeah, it's true. Um, you should have bought your guitar. <laughs> do you have a favorite? I do have favorites. They're probably kind of weird. Hmm? No, I want to see. Uh, you said you liked my birthday. I like that. Maybe you just said that. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't make heads or tails of it. It looks like a dust tin that somebody cracked open and put a geometric thing in. <laughs> but, you know, some of them, I think that one thing's interesting is they, with, if you do this, you're going to refer to other arts. It's impossible not to. So that's like the Car Carico, and that's sort of like Picasso, and something else is sort of surreal. So they they definitely bounce off different kinds of mark making. But again, I just let that happen. I didn't. Make, if I made something that looked like um, a uh, a little surrealist kind of thing, or a... You got your Rothko up here. Huh? You got your Rothko up here. Yeah, like a Rothko with his bling. <laughs> it's a Rothko with bling. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, I, then, it, then that's what it became. You know, this is sort of like this weird little desert landscape. I mean, if that's you walk fun. around, there's eyeballs and people and everything. This was the hottest day of the year in 2018. <laughs> I painted it and I got it all out of my studio. It's cool when he does it because it becomes part of the piece. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I voted. Yeah. 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 So, my question how does language come into position? I mean, it sounds a little bit like I imagine a musician would come up with instrument music and flows, but afterwards, did you find yourself like you were doing now comparing it to something? either to another artist or to say, oh, it looks like... It looks yeah, yeah, it would look like somebody or something, and I just would, okay, next day, tomorrow's another day. So when, when did language come in? After it was done or while you were working on it? When you, you say language... Like, um, you can describe it. For me, the language starts to categorize it, whether it's like another artist or like a shape or like this or like that. So oh, that, that would happen, happen afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, I'd go, somebody walk in my studio and they'd go, you know, that looks like X, Y, and Z. And I go, oh, okay. Like if I made a bunch of paintings and everybody walked in and said, wow, that looks just like this person, I'd be like, wow. You know, <laughs> not that stoked about that. This I didn't care. It's like, great. You know, maybe one looks like a Jameson. Let's go with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like so well, long. I think that does help what you're saying before about how, you know, we all have our own unique uh, experiences and, and the sum of your vision. Yeah, this is the sum of my accumulation of working through all of that for the amount of time you're making work. Right. And, yeah. so. and try not to repeat yourself in the most um, in obvious ways. Clearly things get repeated, but. Um, and there are references to your work as 
well, like, you know, living right there at the volcano that's there. Mm -hmm. And Dave and Ned did a whole series of phenomenal collaborative volcano drawings. I feel like there's some tornadoes in there. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of cool to see as well. I think uh, it's just uh, uh, an, an, an act of just, like I said, opening up the brain and letting whatever comes in come out, you know. Um, yeah. This was an interesting one. Yeah. Tell about that one. Mm -hmm. Huh? The yeah. person here? Oh, no. No, oh, so this woman came in and she said, I went around at the opening, I walked around, and I decided I wanted that one. And when each one has a date on the back, and the date was her birthday. That's kind of, think about the chances, that's kind of rad. putting a map, he called people saying, wanting to look for their birthday, and I was like, I don't know if people would want to do that. It's like the first thing that everybody, everybody wants. <laughs> Where's my birthday? Yeah. But the other thing that he mentioned is like, I wonder if people are going to look for like dates where significant things happened during the year. Um, many of those significant things this year were, were pretty dark, so I'm not going to list them for all of us since we all have lived through them. Um, but everyone's but, dated. That's how you know what it is. It yeah. doesn't have a title. It has a date. Yeah. And yeah. I was wondering, I mean, did you feel, talking about not responding directly to what's going on in the outside world, or at least not responding narratively, did you feel, you know, um, on days where kind of momentous things happened, uh, like that you needed to respond to those things at all? No. Or did you try to really... I don't think so. I put the I voted just because I thought it was a funny thing, because that day yeah. all anybody talked about was voting. Right. Yeah. And when it was hot, I was hot. But I think that, I think that it was really an interior space. I wasn't thinking, you know, I couldn't think about Trump or any, you know, it wasn't like that. This is a, any more than when you meditate, you want to sit around and think about all the shit going on. You know what I mean? You want to empty it out, and that's what this was about. Now, um, yeah. The, the thing I find fascinating is that there isn't a repetition. There's no repetition. I well, love how you did one each day and without not pulling in and referring to what you did the day before. I think I did a pretty good job of not repeating myself, and I think it was that idea of trying to decondition your mind so if you're not doing conditioned marks, which is hard to do. Yeah. But, how do you um, know that? Like, how do you remember that, though? It's, it's like, is it just, you're just totally open? Yeah. You're totally moving forward yeah. all, all the time? Yeah, exactly. Trying to keep keep uh, keep the creative process going. and. Um, yeah, because they're all different. Every single one of them is different. Well, every day is different. I mean, was today is not like yesterday. Why would they make the same work? That day, you no, know, really. I mean, everything's every day's different. You're you're shedding skin cells. You're breathing different things. I mean, no two times are alike, so you end up making different works. I don't have the capacity to make the same work over and over again. A lot of artists do. Um, that's part of their process. There's artists I like who work that way, but it's not the way I work. I'm. No. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it, but, I, but, you know, I mean, I want to be like David Bowie, every album is different. I want to be like David Bowie, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, after Ziggy started, that was it, he was, was done, you know, move on. So, anyway. So that's the crux of it, you guys. Anything? Yes? I think it's fascinating and inspiring as an artist that you said that you're kind of critical of your stuff. And I know that, like, when, you, when I paint something, like, I'm so critical. And, you know, I watched you, I did 365 days, and I saw you a couple times at Brentwood doing stuff. She was a student of mine, yeah. And, and it, it was really cool to me when you posted something, and, and like, you know, the critical David might have gone, oh, this isn't finished, but it was finished because it was over. 
Exactly. You have them all on display, and like you know, if you were in your critical self, you'd probably be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not hiding this. You're right. And it's so I thought that was really inspiring because I love seeing artists work when it's not necessarily the thing. You know. Right. Self criticality can really it's 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 important to be self critical in that you. Too much self-criticality criticality can get kind of the, can get in your way, and um, this was a good way for me to get outside that because I am more. That's why I say, she says I want to come to the studio and see what you're doing. I'm saying mm, I, I'm not there yet. It's That's not, totally changed now, right? You're gonna let me come whenever I want. Whatever you want. <laughs> come on, mom. it's a free for all. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It does. It does. And I think that. Um, you know, kind of perfectionism gets in the way of making art, because art is messy and it doesn't always come out of very clear ideas. Um, it, it uh, you know, now we artists talk about you have a project and you research it and then you sort of execute it. And it's like, you know, I'm too old. But I don't give a shit. I just can't work that way. You know, he says that, but he also looks at more art, both in like magazines. I work look at no, I look at tons of art because I like art and yeah. I like looking at other. I, I saw that. Anybody seen that movie, the the TV show, The Price of Everything? Yeah, yeah. I did. Right, I saw yeah, that. about that. <laughs> and it didn't make me depressed because I like art. I don't care about that other stuff. You know, all that stuff is like comes and goes. The money and the collectors and this and that and the. the the, the, the all the stuff around the art world but ultimately at the bottom of it is art and art is fascinating and, and I think that that's what, what it's, it's to me it's just a it, the world is so generative you know and your mind is generative and I think that, that there's no you know the idea I remember Cal Arts we were always told that painting was dead and I, the more I the older I get the more stupid that seems to me <laughs> Like of all the smart people there, that would come out of their mouth like saying, language is dead, love is dead, kids are dead, sunsets are dead. I have to say, I stopped. Everything, you know, fuck that. Who says that shit? You know? I, I right. agree with you. No, it's totally true. I interrupted you. I stopped working with poets, and my line used to be that I stopped because I was so tired of working with people who were consumed by the romanticism of the death of their own medium. Um, and, then, and then I went back to working with visual artists, and I was like, damn it, guys, come on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just no fun. Yeah. It's way more fun thinking everything is possible. Yeah, yeah definitely. Everything have, is possible. I have a couple questions for you that have come up as people came yes. through. Um, one of them is, Source material in terms of collage material, there's like crazy wallpaper in some of these. Mm -hmm. um, do you just gather that over time and yeah. have it with you, or is that? My, a I have a bookcase just full of junk and old <laughs> magazines and collage. I didn't even use that much of it in this, but I used some. I went to, at the Beverly Hills Library. They had a, a somebody said, "Get over there fast." This was like <laughs> ten years ago, and they were getting rid of all their periodicals, and they had magazines from the 40s and 50s that they were selling piles of them for nothing mm -hmm. and, I, and i just got them so now i have just like stuff that i collect and when i and when these with these paintings i would just use things whatever was there because it was part of the process of being open to <coughs> making it wasn't I, again i was just giving myself it had to be two-dimensional it had to be on paper other than that you know, um, I don't work that way with my paintings. I tend to be, I have worked that way, but the paintings I generally make are paint on canvas or maybe a couple encaustic or paint or oil paint or something. They're a little different. A little bit of collage maybe, but this was a completely open project. Um, the other question that a lot of people have asked as they go through the year was, um, why do you stop signing them on the front? Because not all of them seem to want a signature on the front. And people, when you, I've had people, That's what I told people students, I yeah. I mean, students have asked me about signing on the front or signing on the back, and I think you do whatever you want, but I think that it's stopped. I think with sort of minimalism, 
you know, in Ellsworth Kelly, you don't want a big signature on the front. So I think it became the point where people started signing the back. And I thought about signing the front of them on some of them. And then I thought, started thinking that, you know, it was getting in the way. I mean, signatures, or you can be, you know, you can kind of look at a signature as part of the book. That's, that's another thing, but yeah, the signature thing is, you know, some paintings, they, it's just a distraction, so you put it on the back. Yeah. I think people like it on the front, so they can see it. But. Somebody who came in yesterday was like, I think that the point at which he started taking it really seriously was when he stopped signing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're still <laughs> signed, don't worry. <laughs> There's only info on the back of each one. I was like, no, they can't take anything, so that's not true. Um, does anybody else have a question? Yes. Do you see the back of it, or do you write shit on the back too? Some of them have a little bit on the back. Yeah. Some, they have random them. shit back there. Yeah. Some of them do. That's what I would you have to buy one and look <laughs> behind it to find out. Definitely true. Yeah. Anyway, there's probably a lot more to say about this, but I can't think of it at this very moment. Um, but yeah, it was, it's been a very, and Deborah was, con I came in and actually it was my wife that said uh, it might be a good idea because they're all very white, maybe to paint the gallery a color, like a neutral color. And I said to Deb, could I paint the gallery gray? And she goes, okay. I was like, oh my God. Because I figured she would be like, no, I mean, come on, this is going to be a nightmare. I was only like 10 to 15 percent passive aggressive about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy about how this turned out. I think, um, I think what's fun about it, if you allow yourself to, to walk through, I, what I was worried about with the show, I'll tell you one thing I was worried about, is that I would have to cluster them to the point where you couldn't see them individually, because they are very different, each one. They really are different. You know, each one has its own sort of thing, so... Even though it's an installation, um, if you get up to each one close, you'll see a lot of stuff. Well, in itself, that's amazing because you put them together as you did them, and it worked on the wall. Yeah, so it's pretty chronological. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Because sometimes if you put together things together side by side, they just don't work. Right. No, I, it was kind of amazing that they all kind of worked out, and so um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think it's really important to even limit the size, whether you limited the large, um, the biggest size you wanted to be, but the fact that they're it hangs incredibly well because they are. Right. There was a there's a from about eight by ten inches to thirty by mm -hmm. twenty two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think and and there's another way to do it. We showed some drawings in Miami were all the same size, and that's another way where you sort of grid it. And that that's but this was supposed to be way more about day-to-day -day fluctuation, you know. We made them make extra ones for Miami too. I made extra out. ones because they said we want to show drawings in Miami. And I said you can't show these. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's another thing that's been I talked to my wife about it is like I, what's left, I feel like this is a body, and there's uh, what's left of the show after it goes up, some have sold, is then how do I show them? Yeah. Do I show them as just groups of drawings now? Because they're not 365 anymore, yeah. even though I'd love to show them somewhere else. Because, yeah. you know. You've got to make a great book, though. Yeah. It's so got to be a book. book. It's a book. Oh, yeah. Have you thought about collaging the ones you don't sell, like putting them together? I like the cut of your jib. I like the way that sounds. I like that. That's kind of an interesting idea. Ah, 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 let's do it. Tyler and I are both like. <laughs> I like that, man. This is, I could see some big, badass thing out of the shirt. Yeah. That cuts down, down it's not supposed to listen to your art dealer. Let's wait a year. For that. Okay. I think that's the dealer talk. Yeah. Right. I'll take them on in my studio, cut them up, and <laughs> make a giant outfit out of them. Oh. <laughs> um, so have photographs been taken 
Of every all of them? they yeah. took a photograph of everyone, professional, beautiful photographs. I can make a book out you of these. You should make and a book. I would love make, to you make can a book. Do, and, like plates and right. Plates. There's yeah. people who want it. It would be a good book. It's it's if I point. Well, my idea was to put one on each page, which is a 200-page book. Yeah. Um, so you went through it chronologically. Literally, you could yeah. go through the whole year chronologically. I don't know how much it costs to make a book. Uh, George, you publish? <laughs> You're a publisher? I don't know. Not anymore. Not anymore, right? I don't know, man. It's just like, it's expensive, but maybe do a limited edition of a book would be, would be good, you know. Or you could make them on demand. So if people wanted one, you could just have it printed. So. Yeah, so that might happen. So Keep your eyes out. Keep your um, eyes out. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have any other questions? Should any we applaud questions? for this awesome guy? Yeah. I'm so excited.